I was like, all we do is just like crafts. So I was like, I don't want to do craft. Yeah. I was like, when I want to light like, things on fire. Yeah, we're going to burn shit. What? <sighs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my god, what a horrible thing. Oh, you want us to go live now? Oh, All right. Oh my god. I don't even know what episode this is. Do you not anymore. get anxiety when you see that? <laughs> Ew. I did. Well, Ugh. look. What? Do you, do you clear? Do you clean? clean? Nothing. Do you clear out? Check this. I just look at my emails. I might be too high now. Look at the emails. Oh, why don't you? It was just what at sixty-seven thousand. What? Yeah. So do you know how I cleaned it out? Just bulk I, delete. Bulk unread. Oh my god. I don't delete emails. Do you delete emails? Yeah. Don't you? How do you get rid of? I'm so confused right now. No, I did. I, I need something to drink. I can't do this. Okay, I'll keep it going. Um, so are we live right now? Yeah, we are live. Oh, sorry guys. <laughs> I need something to drink. Um, is that is that coffee ready, PJ? It's ready to go. <laughs> how long have we been off? I like how this one started. This one's fun. Uh, it's ready to go? Uh, pretty sure. Done? Yeah, should be a full pot. Really? Yeah. Already? Hey, Matt, you no. might fill. No. What? It takes like 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah. So basically what happened here earlier is um, PJ came in and um, wanted to make coffee. And so I went to go pour it. And it was a warm pot, but there's nothing in there. <laughs> so PJ comes in and makes four cups. Yeah. yeah I, second time making coffee. Just a rookie mistake. Yeah, did, yeah, did you it put sure a, is. Did man. you put a filter in? Yeah. Um, uh, All right. That's that's. I mean, yeah. I would have preferred yeah. to have had a cup of coffee right there instead of pounded Berkey water, but yeah. <laughs> it was clean. It is good. <laughs> um, so we should actually tell everybody because maybe you came here to this video because you saw an ad or because you saw something. Um, but we will be giving away a free pair of yoga pants today. Oh my. Brought to us by the lovely men and women over at Coconut Threads. Don't touch that. I got it. I got hello, it. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Don't do it. Um, um, so yeah, hello, hello. Yeah, uh, there we touching go. Touching all of the perfect. <laughs> you're not allowed to touch that. Can anybody hear? Um, so we're going to be giving away giving away a free pair of small yoga pant. I'm just kidding. You can pick your size. Small, <laughs> medium, large, and extra large is what you can select. Yes. What um, what color are we giving away? Um, well, I don't know. We should ask the representative of Coconut Threads, but I do believe. Uh, a black pair, black pair, Go with on. a nice vent down the side. They're amazing. Is up for grabs. I actually put them on last week. Yes, we had to send them back. <laughs> so guess what? If you get the one with um, pubic hair in the legs, you Ooh. win. You win yeah. a trip to the so doctor. In order to get a free pair of yoga pants, do me a favor and just comment down below. Say whatever. We're gonna pick one of you, but you have to comment down below. Just give us, say whether you like us, you don't like us, whether you want yoga pants, whether you really don't give a shit about yoga pants, you're entered. Just say something. Say something. Yeah. You're like, God, I hate this show. Guess what? You've just entered to win a free pair of yeah, yoga pants. Yeah, because something is better than nothing. Well, do you, it's funny because when we, we get a lot of hate mail here at, um, at the Alternative Daily, and not so much yet the Jake, Jake Carney show, but it's going to come. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can guarantee you that. But what I always like to do is when people say like, oh, like I would literally wake up to emails that would say, oh, you're a fucking asshole. I hate, I hate you. I hope you die. It's like, ah, this is great to wake up to. Um, I would always respond back and say, send me your email. Send me your physical address. I'll send you a free bag of coffee. Thanks for your feedback. And it would immediately like turn that conversation mm. with these people. Look at you. You yeah. just know how to make everything positive. Yes. Should we turn that Sonos off, guys? Yeah, we just need we to should. make a, um, a good... New rule. We turn couple, it off. So a couple of new rules today. <laughs> One, full pot of coffee in the morning. Yep. Right, PJ? Got it. Sorry about it. Um, and then turn the Sonos off. Um, so speaking of coffee, I don't think anybody in here knows this, but... Um, big company day here. I think we're going to go get a new espresso machine for the, for the office. Yeah. So, so then when people only make four cups of coffee and we would just want a one cupper. I can just press a button. Just press a button. We don't have to wait 10 minutes. Boop. Did I just hear it beep? Long go. Uh, did it beep? Did it beep? It didn't yet? Okay. Well, mm -hmm. let us know when it's done. So anyways, if you wanted to get your free pair of yoga pants, comment down below and we will enter you. And then if you win, we're, we'll call you out and get your physical address. In a non-discreet way, so you know, PJ, I keep looking at your Oregon shirt, and I, I, I just want to read like Michigan. Yeah, but yeah. it says Oregon. Okay, it, it is Michigan colors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It is what is, is that navy blue or is that black? This is black. Black and yellow. So that's not Michigan colors. That's navy blue. That's like that's Iowa. That's not black. No, but here's He's the thing. It's, it's Michigan font. Ah, that's it might it be the yeah, font. It's, the it's font. just it's just. 
Yeah. Is that for the college or is that for they just love the state of Oregon? Uh, this is for the college. Okay. Have yeah. you ever been to Oregon? No. Oregon? Oregon? Yeah, what or- is it? Oregon. Oregon. Yep. The Oregonians. Oregon. Yep. Uh, no, I've never been. I really want to go out here. It's a beautiful place. Sure. I've been there. It's awesome. Have you? Where, where about? Bend, Oregon. Bend. Isn't yeah. that like the best place to it's go? It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Great golf courses. Very good great golf. hiking in the, the summer. The weather was good when I was there. Nice. Yeah. Did you go whitewater rafting? I, I oh, super went cool. for golf, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Steve's a golfer. Steve is a golfer. Yeah. Like, Can you really? teach me how to play one day? Uh, Please? Probably not. Fine. Um, so yesterday... Too expensive. Speaking of traveling to Heard Oregon, that. Matt and I did a day trip yesterday to Tampa. Tampa. And, and it's funny because uh, from a drive standpoint, it's about three and a half hours to drive there, right? No, yeah. Three and a half hours. I just heard the coffee. Hey, PJ, would you put some in this cup for me? <laughs> yeah, PJ. And maybe just a scoop Thank of... Thank you so much. Can you give me a scoop of coconut sugar? He's so just needy. a minimal. So needy. Scoop. He should have done a whole. I know you're right. You're, Anyways, right. you're teaching him a lesson. Um, this is only. I, I don't haze people. Hazing's bad. But we should add a full cup in there. Um, anyways, so we went to Tampa, and what should have been like a three and a half hour drive, we decided to fly. Yes. Um, and it was actually my first time flying in a year. Um, I've, really? Yes. I've put off traveling this year. Um, up until yesterday, uh, because of the new baby, just wanted to make sure that I'm around sure. to help and everything. Um, but it was good for a first flight. It was amazing. Easy, right? Thirty-eight because minutes. Thirty-eight in the air. Mi- minutes. Wheels up, wheels down. Correct. And how long did it take us to get there? Probably three hours and forty-five minutes. Tops. Tops. Le- meaning from the time Start we left finish, our house yeah. to the time we got in there. But but we we spoke. We engaged. We did. We had a couple of adult beverages. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually had a really nice time with you. Yeah, in, in same here, believe it or seat. not. Yeah. The way you said that actually kind of hurts because it makes it sound like you don't enjoy our time that we spend on a daily basis. <laughs> you know, the more time I spend with you, the less of a dirt bag I, um, I feel you are. Yep, yep. Just finished that comment. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I, had a really, no, uh, I had a really good time. Well, am I a dirt bag or not? I actually looked at spreadsheets on the airplane yesterday. Yeah, you did. And you had like feedback. Yeah, and I was like, I think we should do this. I was like, oh my god. And then I was like, are there peanuts over there? I took a picture. Uh, <laughs> I took a picture, folks. Um, but we, for, it was also your first time uh, flying Southwest. Yeah. What were your thoughts? I like flying first class. Okay. Okay. So and there. Me too. <laughs> and so okay. Steve. And there was not. Th- thank you, PJ. I appreciate You're it. Welcome. I was going for just a little skin. You know. Thanks, Peach. If you could put that in a plastic cup for me. Plastic? That, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Thank you so much. They made fun of me, PJ. One day I, I poured coffee in a plastic cup. You would have thought I would have cursed their grandmothers out. And it could have just right melted. Just yeah. Drink it faster. You're drinking carcinogens. So, carcinogens. So we started That's a great warm-up mic word. Carcinogen. We didn't we didn't have any adult beverages until lunchtime, but um and it's hot. It's, it's too hot. Yeah. Come on, this is yeah, crash. Jeez. Well, I can't even drink that. I can't even drink that until after the show now. <laughs> <laughs> So, All right. Anyway, PJ, thank nice. you very much. Um, we do appreciate it. But it was a, it was a good trip, and, and David came along with us. We had to get some work done. Yeah. Uh, but for me, I used to get anxiety for flying, like because I was afraid, always afraid, like this thing's going down. And it's actually one of the reasons that we. Yeah, we said that four times yesterday. <laughs> it was one of the reasons we took a jet instead of taking like the propeller plane. Correct. Because there's been a lot of planes that go down in the Everglades. And sure. I just didn't want to be st- statistic yesterday. So. Uh, I, I don't get anxiety flying much anymore, but I do get anxiety. And this is for me, like of like, oh, now I have to go turn on because we had to go meet with a couple, you know, mm-hmm. business partners and mm-hmm. some some do some business stuff. And <laughs> I just when you have to do that, like it takes so much out of me. It's mm. like, oh, and I know going into it, you are quite. Oh, I can hear this. Sorry. Me too. Uh, you are quite. That's Steven. I can hear you. Yeah, can you stop moving? I can hear blah, 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 Maybe blah. breathing. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to stop breathing. That's mean. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> but, I get an, but I get anxiety like, yeah. when I go into this. But you're like, you're yeah. amazing at it. You're, oh, thank you. Because you go in there and you yuck it up. But you, you did manage to get in one good, um, how can I say? Dig. The, dig at the CEO of the company. Dig. When, when uh, you made yeah. fun of, um, you can just go for it from here. <laughs> Folks, it you can't take me anywhere. It was uh, yeah, I, you know, it, they moved into a new office space, which was beautiful, their new office space. Um, and, 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 and that is one of the things, you know, you just, like you said, you yuck it up. But um, it's, it's always nice, you know, meeting new people and learning about new businesses. And, yeah, you do have to be on. You do have to be positive, upbeat, and, and, and basically just 
you know, just be on all the time. But, uh, yeah, so they, they moved into a new office space and, um, you know, I said, oh, everything's so beautiful. You know, congratulations. It looks amazing. Blah, 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 blah. He goes, oh, there's uh, stuff everywhere. It's, it's a mess. Uh, it'll be a long time before everything's, you know, up and running to, to, to my, my liking. I said, well, you know, I pointed over here. They had just like a cliche, uh, I don't know. Work plus innovation yeah, equals success. It, well, yeah. Like I said, that. it's okay. You're pretty much halfway there. You got your, you know, your cliche uh, sayings yeah, on the quotes. wall. Yeah, quotes. There you go. And, uh, you know, at the time I said it, I didn't realize that that probably wasn't the best thing to say to somebody that truly made a conscious decision to put quotes on a wall. Uh, <laughs> had, you, had you closed the deal yet? Uh, no, even absolutely started? not. Absolutely not. We just met him. Uh, so he walked away. And as he was about 20, 30 feet down that way, he, he, he turned around. And he said, come check out this side of the office. We have more cliche quotes on the wall over here. And I was like, oh, thanks. I'll check them out. But when we actually met with the other people. I meant no harm by it, if anybody. They were, uh, they were laughing. They were, they were like, oh, yeah, they, he really likes The employees quotes. were like, yeah, high five, low five. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. That was, uh, no, that was good. You, you didn't shut it down there, though. But it was good. The, mm-hmm. the deal, we, we did all right. Yeah. Um, but I do get, you know, I get anxiety. And it's funny when I wanted to talk about anxiety, Brianna wanted did not want to talk about that anxiety. She was like, "Oh, because you have anxiety, and just get over it." And then Patricia was like, "That's really insensitive because it is." But I want to ask you <laughs> specifically, is because you always say like, "Oh, I don't, I, I don't have anxiety, so I don't know what that means." Like, do you really not like feel? I don't want to take even talk about yesterday, but do you never not feel kind of like that? like initial panic, that initial kind of like, oh my gosh, like I got to do this, I got to do that. And, oh, this is, have you yeah, not had? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not going to sit You're here and say that I'm immune to anxiety, but my anxiety, um, fortunately, it, it, it lasts 10 seconds yeah. or so. Like that, that thought will pop in my mind and I'll just be like, whatever. You just, you have to do it. You have no choice. You just have to do it. So suck it up and shut up. You basically tell your mind to stop. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, I do get anxiety about certain things. You just, I, I maybe I just uh, I, I, I process it a, l- a little bit differently or deal with it. Um, that's not to say that who knows what five years from now I might be the most anxious person you ever met. I don't know. Well, it's funny because I, when I get it, and I still get it, like I haven't completely erased it by doing you know meditation. It yeah. still comes up. But like always, the first thought is like. Oh God! Why do I have this right now? Why don't I just stop it? But that's the problem, is because everybody, like, you know that it's dumb. But well, that, that, but see, isn't that the thing, Jake? Like, you, 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 you think about it, and you're like, I, I'm having anxiety. I know I'm going to be fine. I, I feel horrible right now, but I, I've been through this how many times? It's going to go away. And and isn't it just mind over matter at that point? Like, listen, body. You're not you're not scaring me. And so, for some people, face yeah. your anxiety. For I some, guess for some people, yeah. But for some people, no, because you do go down a dark path. You can easily go down a dark path of like, oh, what if this is right? And then what if this happens? And what if I have that? And like, and that is very dark. And that is actually the the little literal version of hell. Yeah. Um, and you know, when people talk about heaven and hell, like there's no like fiery place that you go to like after you die. Yeah. It's it's this eternal feeling that well, you believe. Well, it's this eternal feeling of being trapped and right. being in, in suffering. And that's when you are in that moment, there is no end to it because mm. you're just like, this is that deep, dark path. I would say that the times that I can recall getting the most anxiety is um, when I when I like to self-diagnose myself on WebMD.com. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it, folks. Or just... I have like an itch. You, I have an itch on the back of my arm and I have everything from like, you know whatever to cancer and it, I just I start freaking out and then you start reading what are the symptoms and then you're like oh my god I had shortness of breath like an hour ago <laughs> you know and and then you start you start to I feel like you panic yourself I yeah. feel like anxiety is brought on by panicking yourself as opposed to being externally influenced by it but what let, let me ask you what um, what situations in life cause the most anxiety for you Ooh. Um. There is a daily one that happens, and it's not, it's not massively scary. Um, and that's, <laughs> this is how weird it is. It's putting together a school lunch for my daughter. Because, yeah. Wow, okay. No, and it truly is because it's like, okay, now I actually have to make either a peanut butter and jelly or a, you know, or spaghetti or whatever it is. Is she going to eat it? I don't know if she can eat it. Is it going to come back? And it's just like, it's every single day. So on those days that she doesn't have it, it's like, 
do that. And that's, it is more of like a funny, that one's more of like a funny anxiety. Cause that's the one that I can definitely say that like, it's so easy just to be like, Oh, it's, you know, this it's a, is just one. That's it's a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> but often like there's, there's daily anxiety, especially with kids. Like we were talking about this before, which is, um, you know, you, PJ, like, I don't think nobody in here has kids. Right. And so right now, what's that? She's a good dog. They're not the same. <laughs> not the same. Um, but the like right now, there's an anxiety that does not exist in you yet, but will will exist later on, which I'm is, sure. oh my God, are my kids gonna die? Like that's what that's uh, like what goes through your head, right? Every parent, right? Right. Every parent. Like I came home and like or this morning my daughter was doing something and I was like, oh my God, is she gonna fall off of that, hit her head, and then we have to go to the hospital, and then is she gonna have a hematoma? Like that's like the anxiety of how it goes down. But that's when you can you can also Take a deep breath, step back, like, listen, she's just eating, like, your Cheerios right now. We're okay. Right? I am. And so it's, it is that definition of literal hell, which is you're caught in that loop of, I can't get out of this, I can't get out of this, I can't get out of this. And that's actually what can stir, which can stir a panic attack, which is super scary. And your heart starts racing and everything. But, again, it's temporary, much but, like everything. But w- it's, it's this is telling this to race. Right. Oh, of course. Well, there's definitely that brain side of it, yeah. which is saying, hey, you know what? What if this happens? Because mm-hmm. it's this kind of like this. It's the fight or flight. It's this lizard brain, which is always trying to survive. And what your brain does is say, well, if you're put in this position, how can I survive? And, and it puts yourself in the most crazy positions sure. where you can't survive, which <laughs> then causes you to just go nuts. Yeah. And that so that's sense. why practices like, you know, mindfulness, are, meditation. Are you against... Um are you against medication for anxiety? Ooh, oh, you're going there, huh? Um, well, that's a legitimate question. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you can do meditation, which is obviously natural and, and it works for you and a lot of people, if you can do that and you still encounter anxiety that affects your life, I mean, how do you, what do you sure. do? Sure. So if you look, at, I look at it for the stuff that I have, I was able to fix my issues and they're pretty deep issues with, with meditation. I think a lot of mental health issues are, um, there's definitely some diseases, there's definitely some brain things that, you know, I'm not, I'm no doctor, I can't diagnose, but you asked me a question, so I, I don't want to, I don't want to shun away from it. I think that, um, you know, antidepressants and anti-anxiety medication um, can be used in a certain way for good, um, but none of them were ever created and nor should be prescribed for a long amount of time. Right, so right, right. It's a quick is, fix, is right? Peop- it's a it, balancing. It's to you know, it's to get you to function in the world, right? So that you're not all in this crazy, kind of like death spiral. Sure. But there are things that like, and we as human beings, as conscious human beings, need to. And this is why I meditate every day is to get back to our source and. F- also do some introspection of like why do i feel this way okay why do i feel this way about my daughter falling off and hitting her head oh is it because of a deep-seated fear that i had when i was little and so it becomes this constant introspection in Mm -hmm. which you can eventually weed out some of these crazy anxieties and fears that will help you like there's been and i'm not saying it's not it's not like everything turns white and you're in instant enlightenment Mm -hmm. but there are massive things that you can overcome yourself just by getting quiet and dealing with a lot of stuff that's in in your head yeah yeah you know it's meditation is amazing for that and and finding like that spiritual path like i i do think that like if there's a personal development and a spiritual development side of people that they need to tap into to really see that like it is not all of we talked about this in the last one it is not all like just like microphones and coffee that pj didn't make right there's stuff behind it that can really like if you can tap into, which I think everybody can, you can start unraveling some of those like worst fears and whatever. Because then you realize that there you are completely infinite. Like, it, and I, I can do this. Like, you step back from everything. There's an infinite side to your soul that you just can't that you can tap into, and that helps everything kind of just dissolve. Oh, what, what just happened? Keep it going. You, you stop it. Blacked that was up. really good. That uh, was really good. It really you. was. Jeez, um, thanks, Matt. I, you know. Uh, <laughs> You'll have to teach me one day. Um, but another, uh, this, uh, but another, um, I, know, I thought about this today on my run. I do, I, I do have this anxiety with um, working out. Okay, yeah. Uh, and I think a lot of people. I can share that with you. I think a lot of people do too. It's like, so I go every day, like I go for a four mile run. I, you know, I run and I'm exhausted and everything. And I always feel better. 
But a hundred percent of the time, like when I get out of the car, like everybody thinks like, oh, do you just go and just like, yeah, I'm going to crush my workout today. Yeah, I love it. No, hundred percent of the time before I start running, my brain says, don't do it. Just go home. It's fine. Yep. And it's that uh, good for you for overcoming that, that. That is one of the things I just let pass and I'm like, yeah, it would feel good, but no, I'm going. Good for and I think you. a lot of people have that with working out or eating healthy where it's just like, you know, just have one more bite of the pizza yeah, or, yeah. you know what, just stay in bed a little bit longer because mm. it feels good. And as, as, as human beings, we need to, I don't want to say be constantly fighting it, but we need to work this thing out. We need to go. We need to do things. And your brain will always tell you not to do it. Um, do you get that when you work out or no? Yes, I do. I get anxiety about the fact it's not so much anxiety as much as it is anger. Right. So, okay. uh, like for instance, uh, about a year ago, I was, um, I was training for a decathlon. No, um, I was, uh, working out with a trainer yep. who my friend suggested that was very good. Uh, actually a, a friend from high school. Um, he's got a beautiful gym. And, um, you know, he said, you know, listen, I'll, I'll, you come once a week, I'll train you, and then you do your own thing the rest of the time. And I got really into it for about a month. But after that month, um, my, on, my workout, my personal workouts when I wasn't with him started to slowly decline, yeah. my motivation to do those. Then it went into um, when I would have to leave work. I'd go into work 9, 9.30, whatever it may be. And I knew that I had to work out at three o'clock later in the afternoon. Yeah. So at any moment when somebody wasn't talking to me or I was on the phone or I was distracted, yeah. I kept going back to, man, I have to work out at three o'clock. I'm so upset. I have to do this today. What kind of excuse can I come up with? Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. You know, so yeah. So I don't, I don't look at it as anxiety. It was more anger. And I was, I, I was looking for an out, an easy out. Yeah. And when I went and I was done, I was like, what what were you trying to get out of that for? You feel amazing. You should do this more often. You're a maniac. And isn't that how insane people's brains are? Because that same thing that was telling you, you know how you feel. Look how good you feel. Yeah. Was the same thing like an hour earlier. Was like, like don't do it. Pizza. Don't do it. Let's just eat pizza and go home. It's so <laughs> we have to learn how to step out yeah. of that brain. Yeah. But I definitely. I, I did fake a knee injury and <laughs> to yourself uh, like oh that's hurt i was like oh my knee i think i blew my knee out he's like take a couple weeks off i was like yep and uh, that was about a year and a half and ago. i think a lot of people <laughs> do that like i noticed that even playing sports like even in the college in the college room like people would just be like uh and i like i know pain but so i would be like there's no way you're hurt right now there's no way you're hurt. you're just doing that so you're not you don't have to do anything i right. totally understand right that. i literally at the um i had kind of my college soccer career did not end on a bang. It was there was a lot of issues that happened, but it was we were so over. I can relate. We were so over playing soccer towards the end of our career, where we just like it was just not fun anymore. One of my friends literally would um, he had like he had like a, a thigh injury or whatever, and he literally would sit there and just like beat on it. He would be out drinking the night at night. He'd be like beating on his thigh. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I just want to stay hurt. I don't want to play anymore. I'm just oh done my with goodness, it. Yeah. The, he inflicted have, his own pain. Yeah, because you have to think of like we were so so. Just in what happened, it was just such a mess that like it was just not fun, and like we just did not want to play. Anymore. It became it became work for you um, guys, and you and not to mention you weren't paid for it. Well, scholarships, yeah, but the, it, but still, it wasn't like we were getting paid. No, 50, you 60, had 70 the grand. same expectations, if not more, put on you from an academic standpoint than any other person that goes to that school. Now, I don't want to go down this path too long, but I'm going to lob this up to you. As I somebody who played college sports, somebody who played college sports, do you think that um, NCAA athletes or athletes in general that are, are, are given scholarships to come to universities around the country and the world, should they be compensated for the time and effort that they put in for the school? Oh, that's a very good one. Thank um, you. That's a very good question. Thank you. And so I'm not going to answer that specifically. I'm going I'm to return it with another question to you. Oh, hey. <laughs> I'm going to turn it to another question to you, which is, so these same athletes yeah. that are making the school millions of dollars right. and they're making people in the NCAA millions of dollars mm -hmm. and they're making athletic directors and coaches millions of dollars. Is it fair that they're doing it all on the backs of those athletes and that they're getting paid millions of dollars and the, and the kids, yeah, sure, they're getting a good experience and sure they're getting their college paid for, but is it fair that they're making those millions? Not all of them are getting their college paid for. 
Correct. Correct. Right. Um, at, 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 if they become a person that is truly valuable at some point, the next year or the next year, from a, they from will a eventually get standpoint. some aid in one, one way, shape, sure. or form. Um, so I think that I think that you raise another great point in the sense that we're 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 it. it, it it's apples and oranges, right? You hire a coach. The coach's job is to win for this school. Sure. Period. Yep. End of story. Obviously, to shape the young minds and all these other things and to teach character and integrity and sportsmanship, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, his job is dependent upon wins and losses. Yes, Wins it is. and losses. Yes, and it is. he gets paid millions of dollars, a la Nick Saban. I think Nick Saban gets like... I don't even know. I don't even want to say it because I don't want to be like embarrassed. Seven or I think it's like ten million bucks. Eight, eight million a year. Eight million dollars a year he gets Thanks, paid. PJ. Yeah, I just knew that. I'm kind of a fan. And yeah. his paycheck is dependent upon the performance of the people on the team, the players on the team, who, yes, they get scholarships, they go get a free education, but they don't get paid. I think it. I don't think it's black and white. I don't think it's something where it's like. You just start paying people like crazy. I, I don't think you can pay a 21 year old kid like a hundred thousand bucks a year just because he's the starting quarterback because of this specific thing. Not because he's an idiot. Not because he's going to go out and blow it. But because what about the women's water polo team that is amazing and winning national championships? And their coach's job is to put wins on the board and bring national attention back to the back. So how do you actually say? I think that you. So how do you how do you fairly compensate? The, the water polo team and the men's volleyball team and the men's football team, right? Uh, I mean, there's there's two ways you can go about it. The Tell mo- me. The more liberal way to go about it is every student athlete gets paid the same amount. They get paid an hourly. They get paid daily. They get paid by the game. Whatever that metric is, no matter who you are and what sport you play, you get paid the same amount, right? Uh, the other way to do it is to actually put some skin in the game and say, okay, uh, football – this week or this year is going to earn us X amount of millions of dollars due to television rights, due to other schools paying us to come play them so that they can get more TV rights. Um, Then you can say, well, we'll base it dependent upon the amount of exposure and money that that you're bringing to the organization or the school. Um, And then it would trickle down from there. So water polo, and, and I'm not talking anything negative about water polo, but I'm assuming you know, the football team's probably going to pull in some more money and some eyeballs sure. in the water polo team. So what do they really need money for? Who? Athletes. They have food, housing. No, s- they d- no, they don't. So there's a lot of people that I played sports with in college that weren't offered a scholarship. So they were invited walk-ons or they walked on and they tried out. So they still have to pay for their education. They don't get meal money. They don't get book money. But they're expected to spend eight to 10 hours a day working with the team and practicing and traveling and they can't get a job or they have to study at nighttime and they can't get a job. So I, I, you, nine out of 10 times you're, you're right in the sense that what do they need money for? I don't know. Um, let's look at all the things that happen that athletes do because their, their lack of, uh, of income, they, they make silly decisions. They steal things. They, you know, that I, I, where I went to school at Florida State, I mean, it's, it's very well known. You know, multiple athletes at Florida State have been arrested and, and gotten in trouble for everything from stealing apparel to Jameis Winston Terrific. going into Publix and stealing crab legs. So why did he steal them? I don't know why he stole them. Right. But if, if he was getting paid a modest thousand bucks a month, two thousand bucks a month, ten thousand bucks a month, I don't know what it so, is during the season. During the season, so not me, twelve months a so year. So let me ask you this question: Maybe he wouldn't have stole it. Which, I don't know. And I'll give you an answer to the, your 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 question that you asked me at the beginning. But do um, so you have all these booster clubs, like Miami booster clubs, Florida mm. State booster club, that somehow money always finds its way to players, right? And you just saw what happened for with that reason, Adidas, right? And the reason it happens is because they're not compensated, so right. they're trying to find ways to get them to come here, etc. Right. So if you do end up paying them, like. Does that open the door for the like the boosters, or does it completely shut it off? Right? Do you actually no. stop that problem with the boosters because hey, now we're paying them, so now you don't have to do that stuff. Well, no. See, that's illegal. What's that? The the boosters are not allowed to give money or things or anything. But it happens. It does. So I was saying, is if it, you really want to stop it, it that does. problem, so but by paying the athletes, you're not going to. You don't think that would you're stop not going to change the boosters because the boosters aren't supposed to be giving money to the athletes anyway. So, so that's, they'll still do it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. Fair no, enough. I just think I, I just think that maybe um, you we're supposed you know. College athletes, especially on a on a on a on a, 
big level or a big stage are held to a different accountability than than everybody else. So why shouldn't they be compensated so you, so you for that? you think they should be compensated? I do. Okay. I do. And I don't think you wow. have to pay them hundreds of thousands of dollars. They're in college. But so I'll, I'll take I'll take the opposite side of that, which sure. um, is and I was all for it for a while until I started thinking, I haven't seen a massive protest. I haven't seen these kids on Saturdays come out and say, we're not playing because we want to get paid. I think they really enjoy what they do. Why and, would they protest? And I think it's, and again, I think where the unfair part of it comes from the people in the executive suites that are making all these millions of dollars off of these kids. I do think that there is something to be said about there should be a little bit of, hey, we need, you know, these kids are literally risking their lives every single day. We should be giving something to yeah. them. Maybe give them health insurance. Fuck it. I don't know, right? So anything. Um, Start with something. Right. But <clears throat> if these kids really, if it really was important to them to get compensated, and I don't think it's a big issue yet. No. You know how you easily fix it? National Championship Day, if it was such a massive issue, you just don't play. You say, you know what? You guys wanted us to play for the big trophy and everything. Uh, we're not going to play. And I think that that would change it. But I also, yeah. But Maybe. it's not there yet. I, I, don't think, I don't think they're there yet. So I, well, I also think they're kids. They're kids. They, they, Have you seen some of these? They, well, they're men. Well, their frontal lobes they're aren't men, even. They're men, but well, they're kids. At their frontal the the lobes day, aren't even just <laughs> frontal lobes. done. Yeah. I love it. Um, yeah, they're they're just they're just kids, and I don't know. I just the I'm NCAA surprised. took a step. They took a big step. Um, I don't know. I, maybe five, six, seven years ago now, where they uh, stopped selling uh, college jerseys with the names on the back of them. They're just selling the numbers now, mm -hmm. because Nike, all of these companies were making hundreds of millions yeah. of dollars on some kid yeah. that doesn't get paid one buck. Totally. And they, so, they cut down NCAA. They had the, the video game. Right. Cut it. But why? But why not, yeah. give, so, why not give them shirt sales? So guess what? They know they're robbing them without a gun. <laughs> right. So they're so, trying to make it like. So what as, about the kid? Uh, that, but here's the other issue. What about the kid who, like, like a Johnny Manziel type of thing, who sure. says, you know what? I just want to make some bucks off some autographs. You know what? You know, I'm gonna pay, you know charge twenty bucks an autograph. Do you think that they should come down hard on them, or do you say like, listen, you know what? It's your name. It's your. What do you think? Hmm. <laughs> maybe that's maybe that is that a way where you just say why don't you just put it upon yourself like if you know we'll give you names on jerseys and then you can make jersey sales off of that uh, uh, that way water well Perlo, then that way for a water Perlo team they could start a massive instagram account you know what listen like if he wanted to thing. if he wanted to charge 20 bucks for an autograph I, I don't i don't really give a shit that doesn't affect my life and and good for him if people want to pay 20 dollars to get somebody to sign yeah. a piece of paper god bless you do you having said that having go ahead said, no so, <clears throat> excuse me. So that that's where I stand on that. But the flip side of that is yeah. for them to go sell apparel that was given to them from the institution is unacceptable. You can't do that. What about fake IDs? Fake IDs are totally cool. I had, ten I out had of ten a fake times. ID ring. That's, Have you ever had a fake ID? Yeah. No, I got in trouble at school. Ring? What? You had yeah. a ring? Oh, yeah. Oh. We, <laughs> Tell me more. I got I I got um, in trouble at the honor board. I did. I am um, for distributing fake IDs. How many fake IDs did what you distribute? You Only two. Oh God! <laughs> Not much going on at that school, huh? <laughs> no, it got it got shut down pretty quickly. <laughs> well, so how are you? How are you making them? Well, I, I knew somebody who had a mm. printer who had a label machine. Young entrepreneur. And I was like, how much can it? How much can you uh, make an ID for? And he was like, uh, ten bucks. And I was like, great. And so somebody's like, you know where you get a uh, fake ID? I was like, I do. They're like, how much is? That? I was like, forty bucks. And that's how it started twice. Businessman, capitalism. It lasted for two sales. That's hey man, two sales. So what'd you make? You, what'd you oh, wow. net like sixty two bucks? For two. So you're actually really good at marketing. Hundred yeah. percent conversion rate. Um, found two people, they wanted them, and then it just went downhill. Wow. So, yeah, I got in trouble. Uh, but you know, statute of limitations. Did so. you have a fake ID? Yeah. Yeah, me too. I had one that. I had two, and they didn't look anything like me, mm. but they worked. What about you, Steve? Do you have a fake ID? I I never needed them. I I have gray hair, can't see it, but I had it in college too. So I just salt and pepper, salt went in, and pepper. I get those twenty one and over wristbands. Mm, nice. Yeah. What about you, Peach? Of course, of course, yep. of course. Oh, I mean, he's like, just, I went to a Christian institution. Of course, <laughs> <laughs> everyone everyone has a fake ID, whether well, you want it or not. Everyone does. What state? Uh, my well, so mine was Florida. Which is Ooh, the dumbest decision in the world because I went to school in Florida. So hey, why is that yeah. bad? Well, because like a bouncer or a security guard that's working the door at some place in Florida yeah, probably Florida. lives in Florida. Obviously, he's employed, so he's probably more familiar with where everything. I mean, he look, think about it. 
you look at thousands of IDs, <laughs> you're probably going to see the one that sticks out where the emblem or the, or the what do they even call that thing? Hologram in Wait, the back? No, when you say fake, was it actually somebody else's or was um, it? Uh, so when, I don't know, I was in high school, somebody put in a mass order and they oh. were shipped from China. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. it's a thing. <laughs> Can you really get these? Is it easier oh, yeah. to get them now? It's so opportunity easy to get there these. for you, Jake. Jeez. Isn't right. that amazing? They so were it really was fake. IDs. It was like, yeah. uh, so it wasn't like somebody else's ID that you used. No. Uh, no. That, that's actually the smarter way to do it. But Are there, no. there statute of limitations on PJ? He just graduated. I was just about to say. <laughs> he like, didn't do that. They're literally sourcing IDs from China. Oh, they're man. so far ahead of this us. Is the problem. So but do you think, like, us. I'm sure if the feds wanted to crack down on it, they could, but it's like. The guy that got me, me my fake ID, he, like, had a printer, and I got a Tennessee one. I was from, I think, Knoxville at the time. Chattanooga, maybe. Uh, my picture and everything. He, Yeah, he totally went to jail. Okay, oof, yeah, man. totally went to jail. Well, let's get on. Let's get on another topic before. I don't we know. It's go. probably like two months though, so it's worth Ooh, it, right? Yeah, it's totally worth it. So, cool. if you want to win a pair of yoga pants, say something below. Tell us what's going on. Uh, if you hate us, you tag a friend. The moisture wicking tag technology a tag is three friends. a ten. Uh, so, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. Guess what? They're combining. What? Yeah. Say what? What's that? I don't know. So, so the, the Boy Scouts is like the overarching company, but you are a Cub Scout, and now you can have be boys and girl Cub Scouts. And a, a, a female Scout can now go all the way up to Eagle Scout. Oh, is it like a Weeblow? Can they do Weeblow? Were you in Boy Scouts? Yeah. Uh, I did the first year where you do like the boxcar racing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I still have it. I was a I was you a know cubby. an awful lot about the hierarchy. Yeah, you do of <laughs> Boy Scouts. I, our, our good guy PJ over there wrote the article. I read it. You so what happened, oh, PJ? Tell oh, us so what happened. Now you're calling. Uh, which article out. is this? <laughs> <laughs> I was I, I started. I was working on this other one. Here. This is the Boy Scout and Girl Scout okay. segment that we're on. Of Boy Scout is uh, ordering a fake ID from show. China. <laughs> right. Um, so basically, the Boy Scouts announced yesterday on their website. It was around story broke around 1 p.m. Um, that they're gonna be letting girls join and the Girl Scouts aren't. So it was kind of like this feud, but it was also at the same time, it was like historic. So for, is it like, as a girl can be a Boy Scout or <clears throat> are you just Scouts now? Um, it's, I guess they're gonna be called Scouts and they're gonna I think be- it's cool. Yeah. yeah. I, there were some comments on the article, some really like nasty people um, who, were, say? who were saying like, God made boys, so they need to be Boy Scouts. And God made girls, so they need to be Girl Scouts. And none of this intermingling stuff. And it was like, oh, my God, you sound like a really happy person. Yeah. Um, a lot going their, on. In their statement, they said the biggest driving factor for allowing this was uh, in the busy world we live in today, <laughs> parents are looking for activities that all of their children can totally, take part in together. I totally get it. So which, it makes sense. From that that standpoint, but I was a whatever. I was a Cub Scout for like one year, and I did like the box car race. That was like the most fun thing we did. We yep. did like one camping trip, and it was cold and it was awful. We never did. And then, at, but here, check this out. And then after that, all we were doing were crafts like on Monday nights. And so finally, like I quit, and like one of like the Cub masters like sounds more like Girl Scouts. Call me, <laughs> call me, like like oh. talk to me at school. He's like, why'd you quit? He's like, I was like, all we do is just like crafts. I was like, I don't want to do crafts. Yeah. I was like, when I are we gonna like, light things on fire? Yeah, when are we gonna burn shit? Yeah. Like when can Come I like on. when can I make a teepee? Uh. Well, Cub Scouts are not going to be fun now. And then, we did, <laughs> and then we did like, I remember one day they wanted to do a boomerang. And think about like when you're like seven or eight years old, you think boomerang, like I'm going to throw the son of a bitch and it's coming right back to my hand. And I remember like, like the scout leader would throw it, would never come back. I'm like, this sucks. Like, yeah. what am I doing in here? Right. I'm going to put, I'm going to make a beaded necklace and throw a boomerang that doesn't come back. And you get like spider bites on your butt. Oh my God. Yeah, you know, weird. just don't even join the scouts. It's awful. Boycott the scouts. Oh, not the NFL. Not because it's boys and girls, just because it's... Yes. All you do is craft. It's just boring. Like, make a fire. Like, teach a seven-year-old how to they make a fire. They should take a page out of, like, like SEAL Team 6 training and just, like, drop them off in, a, like, the <laughs> wilderness and be like, we'll be back 24 hours. <laughs> and they have, like, a flashlight and, like, a piece of wood. Do you think that they could survive? Like, I don't. Yeah. We don't. That's... They don't. They, I wouldn't. I wouldn't really condone that. That was more of a joke, but it wasn't a good one. Oh, it's into the Cub Scouts, the Cubbies. Yeah. Uh, it was awful. It was awful. I'm sorry. I never did it. My my mom never. She, she she hooked me up. She made me take piano lessons instead. Mm, way better. Way <laughs> yeah, better. Totally. It was so cool. At like four or five, like when still? people are playing kickball in the cold of second. Like, Thirty more minutes of the Canon in D. <laughs> Great song. Yeah, it play. is. Uh, uh, can you still play? Yeah, I could play. You know, like all the all the classics, like. Um, Oh, man. Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> um, 
Uh, I could play a couple songs, but no. I, in hindsight, I really wish I could play now. That's so awesome. Oh, my God. It'd be I took, so cool. I took lessons when I was, I think, like in fifth grade. Oh, did you really? Yeah. And so, like, that's starting late for kids. It right? is. And so, I remember for my first recital, like, I literally did Mary Had a Left Little Lamb. Mary Had a Little Lamb on the black keys. Cause, yes. like, so, here I'm like a fifth or sixth grader going up there. And, like, I start Mary Had a Little Lamb, and I stopped in the middle of it. My dad, like, they have, like, a video, and then my dad's like... Yeah, <laughs> and, then, and then my dad was like, "I didn't know what to do to take you off the stage or whatever." And then like I started it again and I finished nice, it. Nice, good job. So of course my parents have standing ovation. This little girl, this little, little bastard, came up. Can't she say was that. like, she was like five years old. Went up on the harpsichord, not a piano, like a harpsichord, like those little things. Crushed it and like busted out like fur lease or whatever. And they get she got like a standing That's ovation. I'm, and like here I am, like yeah. 12, I mean, like I, listen, some are better than others. <laughs> so you know what I mean. Some have have a calling in certain things as opposed to others. You were a businessman. You were an entrepreneur. You said, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy a fake ID for ten. I'm gonna sell it for fifty. <laughs> this girl, this little girl is probably you know she's probably operating. She's probably a genius. Yeah, she's doing way. More <laughs> but yeah, I did a few recitals. Life. Okay, you want to talk about anxiety? If I can remember back that far, I had anxiety about those recitals. Yeah, hated it. Dressed up, number one, nobody's comfortable when you're young and you're dressed up in like a tie. And then you got to get up in front of all these people and play like some stupid song that you don't even want to play, but yeah. you had to practice it for the last three months. I crushed it, though. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I crushed it. Um, I actually got to ask my mom if she has any of those videos. I would love to. I would to love to. It. But how would I play it? Because it's on a tape. V and VH I don't have a Do you know VHS. what a VHS is? I do. Okay. Yeah. Have Just you ever owned it. a VHS? No, parents. I never owned Parents. Them, no. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, my God. No, I, I never bought one. I was like a little kid. Yeah. yeah. He like grew up on like Blu-rays. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Those are even like historic now. It's Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Do you even know so what like, I bought AVIs are and stuff? No. Oh. I bought a, uh, a computer about two years ago and I went to go input like Compact a, Persario? a DVD and there was no, there's no They're hole for it. <laughs> so I literally had to call, I called about five people and then I finally called the company and they're like, yeah, we, we just don't make it. Like, what do you mean? How do people put DVDs in their computers? They're like, oh, people don't do that. I was like, well, what if they want to play like Flight Simulator 08? They <laughs> they need to put a DVD in. They're like, so they sell these cool little things that are USBs, and then you can just. Honestly, I just so technology. So speaking of technology and flight simulators, um, there's something that I don't think any of you know about Matt, which oh is my. he is like a f a flying geek. Yeah, um, like an airplane thanks. geek, but I mean that in a really good geek type thanks of way. For calling me out, like uh, so he actually you do the flight simulator stuff. But as we were on the airplane yesterday, he was telling me exactly what was happening with the airplane. He was like, "Pilot's not even controlling anything right now. He's kicked back." And he's like, "Feel that? He just took over. Now <laughs> we're landing. See how it's going back and forth? It's because the pilot has it." Mm. And then as like when you land like an airplane, I just thought you land and then you like hit the brakes and it stops. <laughs> Do you know that there's actually reverse jets that happen and that actually that's what stops it? Am I the, you know, am I the only one that did Reverse, reverse thrusters. What? Okay, next topic. Spoilers. X Plane 10. Spoilers. Uh, but yeah, you're he, you're quite knowledgeable in that space. Thank you. Thank you. And the you. way like you were talking about it like was very passionate. I, I you know, I really enjoy it. If somebody was like uh, you know, you can go be a pilot, I I would do it um in a in a heartbeat. I just would leave us? I would. Okay. I would. At least at least um Patricia, you can have his desk. You know, every other weekend, sort of thing, like custody. Um, but yeah, but that's a hard, that's a hard road. And, and like you steer too with your feet mm, and this and that. Mm. Yeah. Um, fun you fact. You did good. For you did good. You did good. Thank you. I'm proud Thank of you. you. Um, remember, if you want coconut threads, a pair of coconut threads, yoga pants. Comment below. And we'll give you to him. Um, that's it for me. You got anything? Yeah, no, I don't. But I want. I do want to say those coconut thread pants are incredible. Yeah. Uh, the venting is is definitely incredible. It, it offers you know a lot of coolness. Um, Have and, you put them on? Uh, I haven't tried them on. I've just I've, I've gotten some feedback from from some of the folks that I know that have them and they love them. So uh, definitely check them out. Yep. Um, so comment below. You can also, if you want to learn more, is the site ready? Coconutthreads.com. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, coconutthreads.com. Uh, uh, Check it out. Yeah. PJ, anything for us? Um, did we bring up the m, &M story? Uh, we'll talk about it later. Okay. <sighs> um, Thank Steven. you. I'm tired. I'm hungry. All good. Great job. PJ, Proud of everybody. Awesome. Are you okay? We didn't bully you too much today? No, no. You all right? I'm always good. I'm I feel like we need to, to get Jeff a mic. Am I allowed to do this? Yeah. You want to mic, right. Jeff? Yeah. Should we mic up Jeff? 
Well, we we need to get another one of those things. Can we just get? Can I get the thing where like I just have this? It's like right here. And I no, just talk and I, this looks way better. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you can find us at YouTube at youtube.com slash the alternative daily. Just don't know. We don't. Uh, we sorry about the YouTubers. Facebook. This is things. Facebook. Oh, Facebook hey, this Facebook. Uh, so share this video. Yeah. Um, like Steve us. Steve should be our plug man. Say, yeah. yeah, say something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, say something below, and we'll yeah. give you a free pair of yoga pants. You you, take it over, Steve. You just keep talking over me. No, you did a great job. Thank you. That's all, we got. all right, like, guys. Like this video. Comment below. Like this video. Comment below. Find me on Twitter, Instagram, Jake Car at Jake Surfs, Twitter, and then Facebook. You hear us at the Jake Carney Show. Uh, for everybody here, and Patricia, who's either waving at us for or everybody, and we'll have a good night. See ya. See ya. Here's your pen back.